time for our final one-on-one -on -one of the year. Sitting next to me, the voice of the 49ers, Ted Robinson, as we have our chat at the end of each season. Ted, how do the, how do the players turn the page? How do you turn the page from a disappointing 2016 refocus into a clean slate in 2017. The first word that comes into my mind is quickly. You want to turn the page on this quickly. Look, we all understand how disappointing a season this has been for the faithful, for the players, for the coaches. When you walk into the lobby of 49-49 here and you see five Lombardi trophies, you have reason to see this is an extremely proud franchise. And obviously this season doesn't live up to that level of pride. So now we're all gonna watch and see what will be done to address that. The most telling comment and conversation I had during the year was probably three, four weeks ago with Glenn Dorsey. And I was just asking Glenn, you know, what he thought was the key to the run defense solidifying there after those string of weeks where opposing teams were running very successfully against the 49ers. And Glenn said, basically, we got to the point where we said enough's enough. And I thought that was it because it wasn't about scheme and tactics and all, it was about this. And I, I think that was very telling to me. I think that's an organizational position that a lot of faithful would like to see the 49ers adopt is to say, hey, look, this is enough and we are going to make every effort, which I believe will happen, but we're gonna make every effort to ensure that we return to the glory of the 49ers. Any losing season, there's potential for change in the coaching staff. There's potential of change in the front office. What goes into those decisions after a season like this? I think the ultimate decision-making point is can we improve with the status quo? Can we keep the current team in place and expect to improve? The decision last year was clearly made by the 49ers that they didn't feel that the coaching staff could stay in place and improve. They changed coaching staff. I think we're all waiting to see what decisions are made in terms of the entire decision-making process and the coaching staff and the players coming up for 2017. The harsh truth is that the 49ers took a step backwards in 2016 just in victory total, and that's how this is ultimately measured. It can't be acceptable for this proud franchise to, to take a step backwards from what was already a disappointing season. And then the shift of focus turns to the quarterback position. We saw two quarterbacks this year, Blaine Gabbert and Colin Kaepernick going into week 17. They both had one win apiece. How would you evaluate the quarterback position in 2016 and what could possibly come in 2017? We came into 2016 expecting this to be a Blaine Gabbert year. Blaine Gabbert statistically played well the second half of 2015 and had some very good games against the NFC West rivals. With Chip's offensive pedigree and the system and all, there was hope that Blaine could continue to progress and be a good starter in the NFL. And that clearly didn't happen. So now you get, I think, an unexpected opportunity for Kaepernick to come back and resurrect his career. We've seen flashes, but nothing on a consistent basis. And you've tried to build the team the last couple of years, I think, using the run game as a foundation. At the same time, you've been trying to regroup and refit your offensive line. That's still a work in progress. I think there are growth pieces there, but until that happens, the result is an offense that just doesn't produce enough to win in today's NFL. When you look at a couple of the draft picks this year that might be signs of optimism, DeForest Buckner, six sacks. Rashard Robinson got his first pick against Los Angeles, sealing that win. Have you seen positive signs from them throughout this season? Certainly, those two are the prominent defensive names. Look, you have two players step in and be, Buckner's been an every snap player this year, extraordinary. You always hear about the rookie wall or in college, the freshman wall, because a player plays a level of play and a quantity of play they've never played before. And Buckner's done that this year, playing at the highest level and playing an extraordinary amount, and he hasn't wilted. That's a tremendous tribute to DeForest Buckner. Richard stepped in and done a nice job in the secondary and clearly shown growth. It's why he was drafted. There's reason to believe he's a guy you go forward with. Garnett has stepped in to be a starter second half of the year. And when you look at Garnett and Trent Brown together on the right side, you still think, okay, that's something that the organization can go forward with. Zane Beatles was a terrific pickup this year and, and his value has been so immense down the stretch when he's played three different positions and been the leader of that O-line while Joe Staley's been hurt. So there are pieces you see to grow by. 
it is essential that the 49ers fix the quarterback position. And then secondarily, it is essential to me that they fix pass rush. You have to pressure quarterbacks. And we've now seen the 49ers play two straight seasons without really being able to pressure quarterbacks on a consistent basis. It's not hard to find excitement in a top five pick, which likely to be the number two overall pick, the 2017 NFL Draft. When you name those, those two position groups, the pass rush and the quarterback, at number two, have you seen anything this year and any names that might be on your wish list this year come draft day? To me, it's not about position. It's about a player that impacts the game immediately and that forces the opposing team to worry about them. My personal view is that the 49ers with their top draft picks, plural, need game changers. And right now, I think that's been the shortfall for the last two seasons. The 49ers have lost the top tier players, the guys that force the other team every week to construct your game plan around worrying, where's so-and-so this week? How are we gonna defend so-and-so this week? That hasn't been the case here the last two seasons.